advisor with Orbital Sciences. And we are also joined by John Dickerson, the uh, test director for tomorrow's activities here at Wallop. So we'll get started with Alan. Okay, thank you, Josh. Well, it's been about five years since we started our uh, program and our partnership with Orbital uh, in the COTS program, and there were five short years, Frank, to take you think so? that beautiful <laughs> graphic. Yeah. It's always exciting to see your view graphs come to life, and when you drive out to the pad today, we certainly can see that. Uh, brand new launch uh, uh, pad, a beautiful rocket, and uh, it's certainly been uh, an amazing five years. We began the program with uh, several objectives. The first was to uh, apply NASA strategic investments to stimulate the commercial space transportation industry. And I distinguish uh, the transportation industry from the broader commercial space industry because it really implies transporting products and, 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 and cargo to a destination in space and, and then potentially bringing that back as opposed to just launching spacecraft or satellites, which, which has been a thriving industry for years. So ours was focused on the space transportation. Uh, we would do that by opening our vast resources at NASA, facilitating access to our expertise and our facilities and our equipment, and uh, make that available to our commercial partners with the goal of achieving safe, reliable, and cost-effective access to space and uh, to low Earth orbit and, and, and the International Space Station in, in particular. And if we were successful in doing that, we also recognized we needed to create a market environment that would sustain this emergent new capability and uh, make that environment, uh, uh, make, uh, help uh, create that market. And the International Space Station provided a, a perfect market for these new capabilities with reliable and predictable uh, needs. And we followed through with that commitment because shortly after our award, by the end of 2008, we uh, awarded Orbital and our other partner, SpaceX, commercial resupply contract uh, to service the space station. Uh, and in Orbital's case, they were awarded a contract for $1.9 billion and eight uh, <coughs> resupply missions uh, through 2015. We could bring up chart one. Okay. Now, under the initial agreement with Orbital, uh, we were to uh, make incremental payments up to $170 million for the successful performance of a series of milestones that we pre-negotiated under the agreement. Uh, those were a series of 19 milestones that were t to culminate in the uh, demonstration mission to the International Space Station. Now, because we had limited funding in the second round of competition, we just didn't have the capability at the time to uh, provide assistance and funding for multiple flights. Of course, that would have been optimum. But um, as 2010 came rolling around and it quickly became realized that the station, uh, the space shuttle would be retiring, uh, the services of resupplying the space station uh, from American soil was, was critically important. We began asking the questions, what could we do to reduce risk and improve the chances of success that our commercial partners would be able to provide these services? And in consultation with Orbital, it was determined the best possible thing we could do to uh, improve our chances of success was to add a test flight, because testing is so important. And uh, you know, sh should there be a, a problem in these initial flights, we, we certainly wanted the capability uh, and the opportunity to be able to, to give it another try. So uh, in 2010, we requested funding, and in 2011, we were appropriated the funds to add in the additional risk mitigation milestones. Those were a series of 10 additional milestones that Orbital has performed over the last couple of years. Uh, we added $118 million and the ability to add the test flight that we're about to see tomorrow. So we have uh, left in the agreement uh, four milestones. The flight tomorrow uh, is one of the four. Uh, and we have a, a payment of $4 million uh, on, on uh, that milestone. And then there will be three more that will lead to the demonstration to the International Space Station in, in a couple of months. 
and that will complete our COTS agreements. This does represent a new way of doing business for NASA. NASA is not directing the design in this case. We are a partner. We are an investor. We are a technical consultant. And we are a resource to Orbital uh, to help them uh, in, in, in many ways. And we have reached back through resources across all of NASA uh, throughout the years, uh, helping Orbital with the partnership. So it's really a uh, different way of doing business. We're sharing the cost. Uh, this is, we are certainly not paying the full cost of the development of these new capabilities. Um, and I think it's been very effective uh, for us. Next chart. So our other partner, uh, SpaceX, completed, as you know, uh, the COTS Space Act Agreement. Uh, they completed their second uh, demonstration mission and first flight to the space station last May. Um, and uh, that program took about uh, six years to complete from the beginning. They had a head start on orbital. Year and a half labor, uh, later, we awarded the, in the second round competition, uh, agreement with orbital. But you can see there's a very similar design cycle in bringing in a, a new capability like this online, starting with design and development into test and production, and then finally the flight demonstrations. Um, so this is telling us to, to create a capability like this is about five to six years. Um, and with the successful flight tomorrow, Space uh, Orbital will be on track for the ISS uh, demo uh, coming up in a couple months. Uh, it's certainly taken a lot of hard work. Everybody has worked so well together between uh, NASA Wallops, uh, the Mars uh, Authority, and Orbital, and all the folks at NASA. Uh, I want to thank them for getting us here to this point today, congratulate Orbital for uh, great work and, uh, and getting us here. And we're certainly looking forward to uh, the flight tomorrow and then the uh, demonstration to the space station this summer. OK, Frank. All right, thank you very much. And thank you, Alan. And uh, I agree, you guys have been great partners. Um, on behalf of uh, Mr. David Thompson and the uh, entire Orbital community and team uh, and the company, I'd like to, again, thank everyone for being here. Uh, we're very excited to be a part of this, very excited to be at this point in our history, and uh, really looking forward to seeing it all come together in, uh, in a column of uh, flame and smoke and a little bit of steam, maybe, um, as we come off the pad. Uh, it has been a long journey to get to this point. It has not been without its challenges. Um, one of the aspects of this, as, as uh, Alan said, is we had to learn to work together in different ways between ourselves, our customer, our partners like Mars, our subcontractors even, and, and uh, figure out how to do this on a commercial and cost-effective basis that's sustainable. Uh, NASA's investment of this has been very important. Orbital's investment's been extremely important. And then um, the investment uh, made by the state of Virginia and, and by uh, other parts of NASA have been important. So it's all going to come together and, and in the end provide us with a capability that we wouldn't have had otherwise. Um, Alan and his team, uh, uh, particularly uh, led by Bruce Manners and Kevin Meehan, have been great to work with. Whenever we had problems, as he said, we worked them together. Um, it's it's uh, important to strike the right balance there. We were very happy to have the help most of the time. And, uh, and when we really needed it, we told you we really needed it. Um, but when we needed to do things our own way and to make our own decisions, they gave us room to do that, and, uh, and that was much appreciated also, because it is actually our rocket, our spacecraft, and our program, and NASA as our customer has a great deal to say in that, but we in, in the end are responsible for its success. Um, and we as a team evaluate all of that, and we take inputs from everybody, but we, we totally understand our level of responsibility in this, not only to the company and to our shareholders, but to the customer and the country. So uh, it's going to be great to see this come together. And um, uh, Mike Pinkston, our program manager, will uh, show a few slides in a moment and give you a lot more detail on the, on the launch. Uh, but I do want to say that, that we uh, see this as a, a key milestone, improving what can be done in an industry government uh, partnership um, and what can be done when, when people take a fresh look at, at how you can achieve spaceflight. And uh, as Phil said earlier, there are many ways to, to achieve that goal. 
And uh, this is the one we've chosen, and it works for us, and we're going to continue to build on that. Once we have flown uh, this uh, test flight, uh, we will turn around and get ready for the demo mission in about three months, go all the way to the International Space Station, and I'll show you a brief video clip of what that'll look like, and then we'll uh, proceed on from there to starting to execute that contract. Um, sometimes we get asked, uh, well, you know, you only have a few million left on the on the demo mission there. A few million is a lot of money, by the way. Um, but uh, compared to the overall contract, you know, why is that important to you? Well, it's not a few million we have riding on it. That's 1.9 billion and the company reputation, all the companies involved reputations. And so this is an extremely important achievement for us, no matter what the size of the milestone payment is. Uh, it's, it's the whole team proving that we can, in fact, do this and do it in a different way and do it successfully. So if we could roll the video, I'll uh, run through a brief summary of the uh, overall uh, mission concept, and then Mike will go into more detail on the, uh, the launch vehicle itself. And uh, I was assured I'd be able to see it this time, so I don't have to fake it. But um, Do we have it? Is it rolling? Let me check. All right. All right, stand by. They're okay. going to dig it up and get it. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, in the meantime, um, the, the the launch tomorrow is is uh, going to take about uh, about uh, nine hours. Uh, I'm sorry, eight hours of uh, countdown activities. And as we go through all of that, we'll be checking everything possible on the rocket, on the uh, ground systems, the tracking systems. Uh, NASA is doing a great job of supporting us in uh, the range. And, uh, and of course, Mars is doing a great job of providing the launch facility. At liftoff, we'll uh, it, it will probably not look like it's accelerating quite that fast in person, but I'll guarantee you it will be accelerating. And uh, in about 10 minutes, it'll, it'll uh, I'm sorry, in about four minutes, it'll uh, expend all of the fuel in the first stage. We'll separate the fairing. The second stage will take over and, and boost us into orbit. And at the end of approximately a 10-minute flight, uh, we will separate and be in orbit. Uh, on the demo mission, once the uh, Cygnus spacecraft is separated, we'll deploy the solar array so that we can have power. And then we'll go through the uh, three to five days of orbital maneuvers required to uh, achieve rendezvous with the International Space Station. Uh, along the way, we'll have to prove some things, such as our ability to hold, to abort, to control, and to respond to commands from the station. Uh, but once we do that, we will approach from below and uh, uh, maintain a fairly stately uh, approach speed and, uh, and stop about 10 meters from the station so that the station crew can then reach us with their uh, remote manipulator system or robotic arm. Once we're in position and uh, stable, uh, they will grapple us, uh, and uh, that's a that's a fun time for the crew. Actually, they don't get to operate the arm all that much, so they're happy to see something like that come up and demonstrate they really can use that training. Um, and so they'll grapple us and then uh, attach us to the nadir port of the uh, node number two. Uh, at that point, they'll go through uh, a variety of checks to make sure that we are. Um, uh, pressurized, uh, that there's no leaks between the two vehicles and that we have a good solid connection uh, both mechanically and, and electrically. And once that's completed, the crew will go through the process of opening the hatch and uh, looking for their uh, Easter eggs or Christmas surprises and, um, and the food that we are, and clothing that we're sending up. And uh, uh, we won't have this much on the first, first mission, but we will have a lot of those bags 800 kilograms worth uh, in, uh, in this summer that'll go up to the station. They'll unload it, stow it, and then they'll um, um, stow what we call disposal cargo in the uh, in the spacecraft in anticipation of uh, unberthing and, and uh, deorbit. Uh, once the hatch is closed and everything is as it should be, they will use the arm to release it, and uh, it'll fly away under its own power and uh, deorbit um, uh, safely away from the station. Uh, a day or two later. It could stay in orbit for several days or even several months if need be, depending on what its uh, mission is once it leaves the station. But uh, when it does deorbit, uh, we'll fire the jets, uh, slow it down by about uh, 300 miles an hour. It'll re-enter the atmosphere over the Pacific and uh, burn up at that time into very small pieces. And uh, hopefully none of that disposal cargo or trash will make it to the Earth. And uh, uh, this isn't my favorite shot, but it does show that it, uh, it, <laughs> it does, in fact, come apart and, and, uh, and burn up, and we can stop it there. So um, 
Anyway, we're looking forward to that mission, but right now we're focused on this one. This is a test mission. Uh, there are things we may learn, and if we do uh, see any anomalies, we'll respond to them immediately and take whatever action is necessary, either in real time or after the flight, after we analyze everything and decide what we need to do to make it better going forward. But uh, we will learn a lot from this. It's a tremendous challenge to get to this point. Uh, I congratulate all the members of the team on, on reaching this point. Uh, uh, our folks on the uh, Antares program, uh, the Wallops team.